If anybody raises the issue about my age in this campaign, I hope you'll step forward and say, Washington needs adult supervision. <laughs> Fairness, justice, morality, opportunity, peace, all goals of our founding fathers, and concepts central to the character of most Americans. Our founders envisioned a system where the people and their political leaders would be working together to nurture these concepts. History teaches us nations fail when leaders fail their people. The decision to invade Iraq without provocation and fraudulently sold to the American people by a president consumed with messianic purpose is sadly confirms that lesson of history. The Democrats controlled the Senate on October 11, 2002 and provided political cover for George Bush to invade Iraq. The Senate leadership could have refused to even take up the resolution, and many senators who opposed it could have mounted a filibuster. But the fear of opposing a popular warrior president on the eve of a midterm election prevailed. Political calculations trumped morality, and the Middle East was set ablaze. The Democrats lost that election anyway, but more, more so, the American people. It was politics as usual. Given the extreme importance of any decision to go to war, and I'm anguished to make this statement, that anyone who voted for the war on October 11th, based upon what President Bush presented to them, is not qualified to hold the office of President of the United States. <laughs> Political leaders must bring two qualities to office, political integrity and moral judgment. If political calculations trump morality and occasions substantial loss of human life, it reveals the sense of moral responsibility these candidates are likely to bring to the office of president. <laughs> Saying I would not have voted for the resolution except if I'd have known that the mess would have been created, or worse, saying that the decision was right but Bush botched it, is inadequate rationale for a person who may hold the most powerful position in the world. Presidents have moral responsibility for the life and death of millions of people. Politics, as usual, is not acceptable for the presidency. I feel entitled to make this statement because when I served in the Senate during the Vietnam War, I spoke truth to power. I officially released the Pentagon Papers, and as a result, Richard Nixon sued me all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. I successfully filibustered to force the end of the military draft. I filibustered alone and with others to end the appropriations for the Vietnam War. America's current political leadership must not continue to avoid the obvious. Our presence in Iraq exacerbates the problem. 80% of the Iraqis want us out, and 70% think it's okay to kill American soldiers. We made a grave mistake. We should have the courage, the courage to admit it. We must bring our troops home now. Not six months from now, not a year, now. If we don't bring our soldiers home now, what will we tell the families of those killed and maimed between now and some future arbitrary date? The sooner we get out of Iraq, the sooner we can turn to international, the international community for diplomatic solutions to bring an end to the sectarian civil war that we caused. The, Democratic control, the Democrats in control of Congress need to act resolutely. And I'm not talking about some mealy-mouthed, non-binding resolutions. They need to precipitate a constitutional confrontation with George Bush. Under the Constitution, the Congress is the only body that can declare war. Implicit in that power is the power to make peace, the power to end war. Even the commander-in-chief executing a war is subservient to the Congress's war powers. Since the Second World War, since the Second World War, various political leaders have fostered fear in the American people. Fear of communism, fear of terrorism, fear of immigrants, fear of people based on race and religion, fear of gays and lesbians in love who just want to get married, fear of people who are just different. It is fear that allows our political leaders to manipulate us, us all and distort our national priorities. Fear has allowed our political leaders to spend more on military armaments than is spent collectively by all the other nations in the world. Who are we afraid of? 
Are we that paranoid? Despite the trillions of dollars we spent on defense, the Bush Pentagon sent our soldiers into harm's way in Iraq without the proper body armor or sufficiently armored Humvees. And where the Bush administration plays games with the problems of our veterans, in effect waging a budget war against the only Americans who made sacrifices for George Bush's oil war. Shame on you, George Bush, letting the profits of arms contractors trump the needs of our veterans. Most Americans are unaware that the Bush administration, under the cover of the wars of Iraq and Afghanistan, has been aggressively initiating a new arms race with Russia and China, whose defense budgets are minuscule compared to ours. Our political leadership, controlled by military industrialists, insists on pursuing a Cold War strategy in a post-Cold War era. Despite spending more per capita on health care than any other nation in the world, we rank 37th for overall health performance. The United States ranks 49th in literacy. Time magazine last spring on the cover noted that 30% of our students do not graduate. 30% don't graduate from high school. China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan hold 40% of Americans' debt. Any one of these countries could throw us into an economic tailspin. Americans, America's political leadership is in denial. The major problems we face are global in nature. Energy, the environment, terrorism, drugs, war, immigration, disease, economic and cultural globalizations. These are the problems that require global solutions. The United States is number one. We are number one in the production of weapons. We are number one in consumer spending. We are number one in government, commercial, and personal debt. We are number one in the number of people we have in prison. We are number one in energy consumption, and we are number one in the environmental pollution we produce. That's where we're number one. The corruption is real and cannot be reformed by those who are enriched by the corruption. Only the people can correct these structural flaws in representative government. In this campaign, you'll hear from many who would be president. Judge us not on how much money we can raise from those who buy influence. Rather, judge us on what we've done and judge us on solutions we offer. I have unreserved faith in the people. Real power that exists in all governments of the world, making laws. Thank you.